Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to chapter 27. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 27, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them upon thy neck. Now, what is a yoke? Well, when back in the old days when they would have an ox or horses plowing a field before we had tractors, a yoke was something that they would put around their neck on their shoulders so that they could pull the plow. So they've got bonds and yokes. And what's a bond? Well, you know, it's like a handcuff. So the Lord's telling them, make bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck. Uh, <laughs> a visual aid, right, people? Verse 3. And send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers, which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. Now, the Lord's not happy with Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, uh, Tyrus, or Zidon. But he's sending them a message, a warning. So these Evidently, their ambassadors or emissaries or whatever you want to call them, when they come from these unliked nations, when they come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah, verse 4, and command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power, and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemeth meet unto me. Hey, I created everything, and I give it to whoever I want. That's basically what he's saying here. Verse 6. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, is the servant of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have I, have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his, la of his land come and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. So, not only did Nebuchadnezzar rule, but his son ruled. Remember in the book of Daniel, it talked about the writing on the wall? That was Nebuchadnezzar's son. Now, in a previous study, we had noticed, uh, I don't remember what chapter it was, but it spoke about the, uh, the Medes taking Babylon and 
It actually happened in Daniel chapter 5. We read about the taking of Babylon, the destruction of Babylon by the Medes and the Persians. So maybe I'll read Daniel 5. Who was the son of Babylon? It's king, Nebuchadnezzar. So let's read Daniel 5, verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess's wives and his concubines might drink therein. So evidently, my opinion here is that uh, by drinking wine out of the vessels of the Lord's house is basically saying, well, our gods were stronger than the Hebrew gods, and we conquered them, and we kicked their rears. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, basically, the, you know, this is blasphemy. You know, but he doesn't care. Hey, I'm king. Being king is good. Verse 3. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princess, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods, plural, and they praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Oh, yeah. Verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Can you imagine that? A disembodied hand writing on the wall. Uh, is that like the Adams family, the thing? Only it's not coming out of a box. It's just in the air writing on the wall. And that's where we get the expression, the writing on the wall. You know, there's a lot of expressions that come out of the Bible that's in our English language. A little birdie told me that's in the Bible. So, verse 6. Then the king's countenance was changed. Oh, yeah. I bet you that scared the crap out of him, huh? And his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. He was so scared his knees were knocking. That's basically the, uh, that's the Bob translation. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Oh yeah, let's bring in all the satanic uh, heathens. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and had a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. Now, I don't know if this is um, his mother or his wife. I'm not sure. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts, let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Verse 11. There is a man in thy kingdom, 
in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and soothsayers forasmuch as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams remember Daniel interpreted dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belshazzar, uh, Belteshazzar now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation then was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah whom the, fa uh, the king my father brought out of Jewry I have even heard of thee well I bet you you have heard of him because uh, his fame was throughout all the kingdom I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee and now the wise men the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the thing and I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom then Daniel answered and said before the king let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation so evidently this writing is in Hebrew and Daniel wouldn't have any problem reading Hebrew being he was a uh, he was a prince of Judah by the way he was a prince of Judah so verse 18 O thou king the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor that's right the God of heaven gave this to Nebuchadnezzar and for the majesty that he gave him all people nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointeth it over it whomsoever he will God puts whoever he wants in charge of any country or the whole earth you know why Satan's still around God has a plan for Satan and Satan is serving God believe it or not you know why we got uh, Biden as president God wants him there you know why Putin's in uh, over Russia God wants him there Merkel in Germany God wants him there her there well maybe who knows nowadays why is Elizabeth the Queen of England 
God wants her there. God puts up kings and he takes down kings. Verse 22. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. You think the son of the king of Babylon didn't know that all these things had happened in the past? Oh yeah, he knew. He'd heard the stories. I bet you his own father had even told him. Verse 23. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. You think these idols can see? Or hear or know anything? No. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. But the God of heaven, oh, you didn't glorify him. No, but you glorified idols of silver and gold. Verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mini, mini, fecal, apartian. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Fecal, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius the Median, some people say Dar Darius, Darius, I don't know. The Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So he was about 62 years old. Let's go back to Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah 27 and verse 6. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know the thing about the son's son unless uh, Belshazzar was the son's son. I don't know. But I don't, I don't know if they had a word in Hebrew for uh, grandfather. And let's face it, when the rich man and Lazarus, when, when La, uh, the rich man was talking to um, Abraham, he called him Father Abraham. Well, pfft, <laughs> you know, he was like a great, 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 great grandfather. But he called him father. So maybe Belshazzar uh, was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. I'm not sure. So, and all nations shall serve him, you know, Babylon, and his son and his son's sons until the very time of this land come, and many, and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which shall not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Verse 9. Therefore, 
Hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out and ye should perish. So here it is. Jeremiah is telling them the truth and he's telling them, don't listen to your witches. Don't listen to your wizards. Don't listen to them. Verse 11. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Uh, tilling the land, that has reference to uh, farming. Now remember, Babylon was the major first world kingdom. And you better believe that they, all the nations round about, all of them, all the nations that were under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar, learned the ways of Babylon. I mean, let's face it. When you conquer a nation, they're going to learn the language of the conqueror. They're going to learn your language. They're going to learn your ways. And as superstitious as people were back in those days, they're thinking, you know, uh, the gods of Nebuchadnezzar are very powerful. He conquered our, everybody. Maybe we should uh, worship the gods of Nebuchadnezzar. Babylon. The ways of Babylon, mystery Babylon, as in Babylon, the mystery of Revelation, the whore, that basically all the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. This is these this is the roots. This is where it started. You know, you might have different names for the same practices, but you know, depending upon what area you live in and what language you speak, but uh, it's all basically the same. So in verse 12, I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Why will ye die, thou and thy people, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilences, as the king has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them. See, God's telling them, I didn't send these false prophets. I didn't send them. No way, dude. Well, that's the Bob translation, yeah. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, and that ye might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. That's why I always tell people, if, if you get somebody that doesn't preach repentance and obedience to the Lord, they're false. They're a bunch of liars. They're Satanists. You know why the New World Order is in existence? Because we got a wicked group of people and the New World Order is God's way of spanking his people, bringing them to their knees, having them look up to heaven and begging for forgiveness and repenting and following his way. That's the whole purpose. God wants to hear the words of our, out of our mouths. We have sinned. 
probably the three most words that the Lord would like to hear out of our mouths. We have sinned. That's where it starts. That's where revival starts. And there's going to be revival. It'll only be a remnant, probably. I mean, I'm not claiming, thus saith the Lord. I'm not, never, never. I do not claim to be a prophet. Absolutely not. But I'm telling you, when persecution comes and those churchgoers find out that they're being persecuted by the ones that they were always told were God's chosen people and that they have to deny Jesus or die, they're going to start looking around going, wait a minute. Either we were lied to, or Jesus Christ was a false messiah. And I think there's going to be a revival among the remnant. I think people are going to start listening. And when they hit the, uh, and when they have to leave the cities to survive, hopefully they'll run into somebody that knows some of the things that you know, like people like me talk about. I know there's not a lot of us, but in Matthew 23, 10, Matthew 10, chapter 23, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 10, verse 23, Jesus said, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. Uh... But, Chaplain Bob, that's that was for the Jews. That's not for us. We're New Testament Christians. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Uh, the Baptists have a method of Bible interpretation that no matter what verse you show them, they can explain it away. Oh, that was in a different dispensation, Chaplain Bob. Don't you understand? You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, well, I hope I hope the uh, Antichrist help them rightly divide their head from their shoulders with a guillotine that taught such lies. You know, God has a very, very uh, stern temper with false prophets. That's why I tell you, if I'm not sure of something, I'm I tell I'll tell you I'm not sure, and I'm guessing. But if I'm positive of something, I'll say, this is what the Bible teaches. Because you know what? There's very few. Very few. There's very few pastors I have trust or have any respect for. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man... Become. So, verse 16. Also I spake to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. Hearken not unto them, serve the king of Babylon, and live. Wherefore should this city be laid waste? So evidently, um, the king of Babylon, I believe, uh, I believe what happened was, they probably paid a ransom to the king of Babylon with all the items of the Lord's ha house. You know, the gold and silver uh, cups and vessels that uh, we read about in Daniel. That's what I'm suspecting. I'm not sure about the timelines of all this stuff. Verse 17. Hearken not unto them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should the city be laid waste? But if they be prophets, and if the word of the Lord be with them, 
Let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. So evidently not everything was taken to Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars and concerning the sea and concerning the bases and concerning the residue, the residue of the vessels that remain in the city. So what's a residue? You know, it's what's left over. So evidently that's correct. Nebuchadnezzar uh, took some of the stuff. You know, that was a common thing back in the old days. If, if somebody was besieging your city and you didn't think you could hold out, you'd give them, give them this gold and silver. You can't eat gold and silver. And all these people that are buying up gold and silver and uh, for the economic crisis coming about and 666, you can't eat gold and you can't eat silver. And besides, all they got to do is pass a law making it illegal. What good's it going to do you? But Bibles, knowing the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is worth far more than gold and silver. In Matthew 16, 26, Jesus said, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All the gold in the world isn't going to do you any good. So yeah, if you had a, an enemy surrounding your city, give them the gold, give them the silver. Say, hey, take, take what you want and get out of here. At least you can eat. You can't eat in the siege when they surround your city. There's no food coming in. That's the problem with uh, you know, a city with a, a wall. So... And believe me, all these people hoarding gold and silver, yeah, it's not going to do them any good. Verse 19, For thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars and concerning the sea and concerning the bases and concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. So he took some of the people, some of the, the evidently there was two, I guess, there, yeah, there was two battles with Jerusalem. Um, he came once and took some, and then the second time, I think they rebelled against him, and then he came the second time and then just, Totally trashed the place, burned it. Verse 21, Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, saith the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. And that happened in, we read about, you know, well, we haven't read about it yet, but Daniel recorded where Darius or Darius uh, conquered Babylon, and then the Medes and the Persians allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem to rebuild it. You can read about that under the book of Ezra and the book of Jeremiah. I mean, I'm sorry, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah. And um, so, you know, that's how that works. They rebuilt the temple. And an interesting footnote is King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, the one that uh, Solomon had built. And then in 70 AD, when the Romans came, they destroyed the temple in 70 AD 
on the same exact day. Can you believe that? On the same exact day, the Romans destroyed the temple, as did the Babylonians. Yeah. God was sending them a message. But were they listening? No. So, guess who wants to rebuild the temple? Yeah. And it will probably happen, too. So... But then that temple's going to be destroyed. <laughs> and I don't think uh, their space force is going to be able to uh, stop the destruction of their temple for their god. I don't think so. But we'll see what happens. Just remember, every eye shall see him coming in the clouds as lightning from the east to the west. Yeah, ain't going to be no secret rapture, people. When Jesus comes, every eye is going to see him. And they'll try to tell you that the there's two different comings. There's not. There's one. And it happens at the end of the tribulation. And there's going to be hell to pay, I guess you could say, for lack of a better word. Oh, hell's a um, hell's a Bible word, right? So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.